Good morning guys and girls. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated our time lapse video for us to take a look at, watch, dissect, inspect, uh, look at retrospectively and you know, hopefully we can learn a thing or two from it. So yeah, um, today we're taking a look at uh, a speed paint that I did for the daily speed paint group and Again, as I've mentioned before, the Daily Speed Paint Group is a group in Facebook. We do uh, speed paints all the time. It's one of the rules of the group. You basically are given four prompts for the day and you have 30 minutes to finish a painting. It's not a whole lot of time, let me tell you that. It, it's a very difficult uh, task to do so. But it's a great warm up for my artistic journeys and whatnot for today so yeah i typically do this daily just so that i could warm myself up for today so um the prompt that i chose for this particular day way back in 2021 was victory at last this is a very very hard prompt to come up with something honestly when i um when I basically read the prompt, I, I, my brain was blank. Like I, I could not picture anything in my head to come up with this. And so typically in scenarios like that, what I do is I typically either do a Google image search or sometimes I go to pixels.com to try and look for some inspiration um, real quick. And, you know, I have been neglecting mentioning this in my videos whenever i talk about the daily spit paint group one of the rules of the daily spit paint group is that you're supposed to look up references within that 30 minute time frame and i kid you not i will cheat i do cheat i am sorry that i cheat <laughs> but i always do my research before actually starting out the speed paint now on my defense I limit my research to five, 10 minutes, no more than that. If I can't figure out what to draw within a 10 minute time frame, I just start drawing. I just push myself to draw something or else I will end up in a black hole looking for inspiration because that always happens, especially when you're looking for reference materials. Sometimes you could literally waste hours just looking at pictures left and right. And I don't want to do that, especially for a daily speed paint exercise. So in the group that is what is highly recommended is that if you were to look up references you need to look that up within the 30 minute time frame once you start the clock then you could do your research i don't i, I cheat a little again like i said i just spend a little extra five ten minutes just looking for something just to juggle my brain and if i can't find anything then i start that's what i typically do and that's what happened for this particular day i was brain dead uh, was blank in my head i could not come up with anything i don't know why i didn't pick the other three prompts i do have four prompts to choose from um maybe none of them were clicking in my head i don't remember what the other three were um but for some odd reason i ended up with victory at last and so i was just like you know what let's just go ahead with victory at last probably that's probably what happens just simply because i couldn't picture anything for any of the prompts especially victory at last but i feel like this was much easier um to come up with something <laughs> so i ended up with victory at last i went to pixels.com did a little quick search and lo and behold in less than like i don't know two three minutes i found an image by george becker it was just a perfect perfect description of victory at last it's basically a picture of a checkmate um the queen has finally beaten the king in the picture the king is down and basically this whole speed paint is just pretty much a study i mean that's what ended up happening is this this ended up just becoming a photo study for the most part um because i pretty much just recreated the photograph as is except obviously for a few changes which i'll you know obviously mention later on um but yeah, I saw the picture of George Becker. I saw the potential of it. I thought that it was a really cool picture and I knew that I had to do something with it. And so that's basically what I ended up doing for this, for the speed paint for that day, which is to take George Becker's um, photograph, do a study out of it and make a narrative story out of it. So, and that is how it ended up with this chess theme uh game um so yeah in the photo of george becker 
the queen has won has checkmated the king the king is down obviously that's what is on the ground the white king has been defeated by the black queen and whatnot so yeah very very cool but as you can see i typically am doing a totally totally different process for this particular illustration than i normally do normally when i do my illustrations or my speed paints i do an outline and after i do my outline i do this really really weird funky very unique way of coloring things um which you'll see in a lot of my videos um it's kind of like a non-standard way of coloring things but it works for me so hey so long as it works why not right um this one is just straight up standard sketching um i did kind of had in mind to block out things but then it didn't really end up that way i ended up just sketching things out with the same brush but as soon as i laid down the initial sketch i ended up just doing forms basically i just filled everything in and then just slowly started kind of um uh, forming them basically and just refining the shapes that i put down um so yeah uh, one thing to quickly note about this piece and this is the reason why i decided to make a video out of this piece um, well, one of the reasons why I decided to make a video out of this piece is because of the fact that A, I totally did a different process than I normally did. Um, B, it is one of the first speed paints I did where I used a soft brush uh, slash um, airbrush. I, I didn't even know airbrush existed. Like I kind of had it in mind. But I didn't seek it out. <laughs> and then somehow I was messing around with Krita and found the airbrush. And I was like, oh, I have to play with this. And so now the airbrush is one of my standard default tools that I use. Aside from the chalk and the regular basic pen opacity. I, I love the airbrush. It's really, really soft and whatnot. And you can see like everything I'm doing right now is very soft. Um... So yeah, that was one of the things that makes this uh, piece unique. And the other thing that makes this piece really unique is that it's probably one of the most photorealistic speed paints I've ever done. No, I wouldn't really necessarily say photorealistic, but it's one of the most realistic uh, speed paints I've done. My speed paints are always cartoony looking, are always very sketchy looking. It's, I mean, that's what speed paints are. There's some really good people out there that could pull off like a very cinematic look and have a much more finished um, version of their speed paints. Uh, Karel Hoiviter comes to mind. Uh, he was one of my inspirations for actually looking for the airbrush because if you look at Karel's um, speed paints, they're very, very soft. They, they look like they've gone through like a lot of filters and whatnot. And it always just amazes me that he does his paintings like this. And that he's able to do all these speed paints within the 10 minute time frame. Because his speed paints look like they're just straight up from a movie. You know. And you can tell that like if he did use reference, it's not a direct reference. Kind of like the way I'm using my reference right now. I mean my reference that I'm using right now is pretty much just a direct copy. If he uses references, I'm pretty sure that he doesn't do direct copies. Um, maybe he has. I don't know. Uh, I never personally get to talk to him about his process. So I don't really know. But the one thing that I have noticed with his particular style is that it's just very, very soft. It has this cinematic look to it. And I was inspired by that. And so when I came across the airbrush, which I should have known that the airbrush existed. I mean, it should, it's standard tool for a lot of drawing paintings. The airbrush is always there. But for some odd reason, I've just forgotten it existed. And so when I rediscovered it, and I was like, dude, I gotta mess around with this because this is too much fun. This is literally maybe the second or third painting. Or I'm actually pretty sure it's the first complete painting. Let me just put it that way. I might have messed around with the airbrush before this, but I'm pretty sure this this is was this is my first complete painting with the airbrush tool. And I love it. Because it looks so complete. I mean, the finished product of this particular speed paint looks very, very complete. And I'm happy with it. My speed paints never, ever look complete. They hardly ever, rarely look complete. 
it's just the nature of speed paint i mean it's hard to have a finished look in 30 minutes i mean you gotta be really top of your game to pull that off you know <laughs> and i'm sorry i'm no dominic mayer and whatnot so it's a hard technique to pull off but um yeah <laughs> this particular piece i seem to have managed to have done it and <laughs> i'm so happy with it and again having that reference uh with me really helped a lot because uh, like i mentioned it was just pretty much a direct copy i mean pretty much the only thing that i did differently in this particular illustration was have the actual pieces be on a chessboard versus in a photograph where it was just on the ground right and so yeah, that's pretty much the only thing that's different between the two. But um, yeah, going back to the process, <laughs> now that I've talked about um, what I love about this piece of my now, let's go back to the process. So in the process that I just did, I basically just did this whole thing kind of like um, what most standard atelier painters would do. Where they would kind of start out with blocks and forms i didn't i started out with an outline and then i went to form but then after i laid down the form it was just pretty much a straight refining it's kind of like doing sculpture with painting you know where you kind of chisel out like all the details out of the shape that you've laid down and it was really easy you know i have one black shape and then one white shape and then it was just easy to just go from there and again like i said having that reference we just helped a lot i just pretty much just know where things goes um the great example of this is like the black right um the black is just pretty much just straight form i mean honestly if you look at it it's just all black pretty much except for the white highlights and it's just so simple <laughs> it's effective it's very highly effective it looks very photographically real um, for the most part and it was just so simply done I mean talk about like real economy of brush movements I mean this was it you know I was just very very economical with my brush strokes with this one so <laughs> I'm really happy to have things laid out but yeah I did forms and then I pretty much started refining the forms by adding details and then as soon as I have it all done I started to work on the background you know i i knew that i didn't want to do the finer details yet i just wanted like the basic shapes down and as soon as i had them down i immediately knew i needed to start in the background and the background really <laughs> was very problematic for me in case you haven't noticed i've pretty much finished the painting within 10 minutes as soon as 10 minutes has passed i pretty much have my painting down everything from here on out was just me working on the background and then maybe five minutes more of refining is pretty much what ended up happening but basically this took me a while and basically what i'm doing right now is basically making a bunch of squares to kind of represent uh the gray pattern of the chess board obviously so i'm basically um doing just a bunch of squares so i could have a bunch of pieces that I could overlay onto the background basically so you see me do one row of squares and then I am eventually ended up duplicating this to have like two or three rows I do believe maybe I even four rows I don't remember obviously I had to shift some of the squares because I can't have them be just you know gray and white and whatnot they need to crisscross basically so you'll see me move the second uh, row which is what i'm doing right now then obviously i duplicated this uh two rows and one more so i did end up with four rows and then after that i'm basically um move it to where i edited its position to where like the black queen could be on a square i don't remember if i put it in a white square or in a black square i, I wasn't really conscious of where to put it on i was just more conscious of it that more conscious of the fact that black needed to be on a particular square and that's really what i just did and then as soon as i have all my squares position out i obviously did a little cut out for the chest pieces because i needed them to show through um 
the black squares are on overlay if i'm not wrong i'm about to put them on overlay yeah they are on overlay i just took a look at it on the right side and yeah they're on overlay mode and you can see me like move the squares around and really that's what took forever i mean me just constantly moving this piece around until i could find like the perfect alignment and whatnot it, it took a while so yeah but yeah, that's what you'll see me be doing in the next few minutes is just moving a squares around and then after that I'll do a little cut out and after the cut out I'll do finer more tweaks to the painting. So yeah, let's just take a watch with the on the video right now and then I'll just come back a little later on to talk more about this piece.
So this illustration is pretty much close to being finished. As you can see, I'm doing my marquee selection um, on the chest pieces so that I could cut out um, parts of the um, grid, <laughs> parts of the grid that I laid down on the floor um, so that obviously they won't be covering up the chest pieces so you see me did i cut it out or did i just do white on the transparency i'm trying to remember what i did uh it looks like i'm doing yeah it just looks like i just did a flood field so yeah i i guess i ended up just doing the transparency on it which works just as well um as you can see the grid that i laid down is now looking like it's behind the chest pieces instead of it being in front so yeah i had to obviously obfuscate that so um so yeah uh you saw me took forever laying down that grid i'm like trying to place it perfectly and it just took a while it's just one of those things that i just kind of had to mess around with and then the other thing that i messed around with was the gradient effect i really really love that gradient effect because it made it made it look like the chessboard goes on for infinity <laughs> so it kind of just fades into the background kind of like an infinity background and it just looks really really cool that way um it looks like um a very intense <laughs> chessboard is what it looks like um but yeah i thought that was a really nice cool little touch that i did um and now that i've finally settled on the final look of the background and i finally squared it out obviously i'm going back to do a few more final touches to the pieces and really i'm just doing an overpaint and on everything um i'm trying to basically delineate my edges right now uh making my edges a little bit sharper so that they read a little bit clearer i don't want the fuzziness to be there so you see me go back and forth with the background and the foreground and you know picking colors on the background to kind of just paint over parts of the foreground and then picking colors from the foreground and painting it over the background obviously to just define the edges a little more just so that it reads sharper and cleaner and clearer so that the shapes read um i didn't do any accentuating on the shadows in this one uh, i take it back i do believe i accentuated the shadows a little bit especially on the white part uh, i think it needed a little bit of darkening but i don't remember if i did or not i, I have a feeling that i did though um but yeah after just those few more small edits the whole piece is done like it it looked amazing. I mean, I'm looking at it right now, and now it's like, wow, I can't believe that I pulled off this look in 24 minutes. By the way, we're watching this video in real time. Like, I did not speed this up. This was done in real time, like what we're watching right now. How long it took me to do this is how long this video is playing. And this is really rare, like I said. Uh, it's just painting in 30 minutes is just hard. Um, some people are better at it. I'm not one of the best ones. I will tell you this much. So I still struggle. But yeah, this is definitely one of my favorites. And this is definitely a success for me. Because it looks so amazing, personally. Um, so yeah. Uh, if I'm not wrong, this should be it. Uh, I should be wrapping this up. Uh, so yeah, there it is. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. And I take it back. I didn't accentuate the shadows, but that's fine because it still looks good. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Good night.